Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back. In today's episode we'll be reviewing a brand called Spark. So is Spark worth collecting? And obviously the answer is if you're not collecting Spark then what exactly are you collecting because there's only only two flagship brands left in this world is Mini Champs and Spark. Let's take a look at them but first <laughs> check out this this size difference. So if we put them if you align them on the, well, let me put them in frame. So if we, if we align them um, here at the back with, with the rear tire, the results are quite shocking. So <laughs> this is how far we come with Formula One in, uh, well, this was 2018 and this is 2021. So let's get this out of the way. Let's come back with uh, some interesting stuff from, from Spark. So obviously this is a limited edition um, when Max Verstappen won the world champion. No, no, Mike, that was so not right. They released something with the with this with the pit board. Obviously this is uh, <coughs> glue. It was stuck. This piece of the, this piece was stuck there. Now it um, it came off. Another testament of the quality of um, of these cars. I can understand that I'm going to start the ride soon. But anyway, um, yeah. So you get this uh, wooden plane. It's kind of cool. I like it. Um, then you put the card there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like it. And then you have a pit board. Um, some of these cars today, they, they sell you the pit board and they charge you twice for it, which is, well, which is debatable. And um, what I really, uh, what I really like about, um, I really like the uh, about the Spark cars um, are obviously the suspensions. They always look premium always try to add that like carbon fiber finish on the floor and um, some really cool details on the inside of the um, uh, of the rear wing obviously you have that light there the exhaust so look all in all it's kind of cool but you can see here they dropped the ball so the misalignment there botched glue here and there check this out so I'm obviously playing, paying uh, 80 pounds for uh, for something like this, and uh, <laughs> it's broken. Or yeah, what am I doing? Let's take this one. It's quite annoying. And um, yeah, the finish is uh, the finish is not there. And obviously, I can understand why. So these cars have become crazy complicated to build, even for for manufacturers like comp up compared to this one. And here you can see the craftsmanship, right? So. It's an easy car to build. Arguably, the worst part of building a um, an older gen car was was the rear because of the engines and the intricacy of the suspensions and these pipes and and tubes and what they have. But other than that, the cars were simple. Now, fast forward um, 50, well, 60 years, and we came up. Um, we arrived at the stage where this looks more like a more of an airplane. Front wings are so complicated to replicate by diecast manufacturers. I can understand why these cars have become so fragile, and I can understand why they come so expensive. So, hopefully, I'm expecting now the price to drop since we, we have new regulations and uh, um, obviously new cars. But I highly doubt that would happen, and obviously time will tell. But um, yeah, one of the uh, the main disadvantages of um, of Spark is that the wheels don't move. If you ever care for that. So um, again, if you put them on a, if you put them on the display cabinet, obviously you don't care if the wheels, the wheels don't move. And uh, um, another downside is that sometimes the helmet can't really tell, but the uh, you can actually see um, uh, some decals misalignment. But I guess the good thing is that you can see sort of like can't really focus that much, but you can see Lewis Lewis's head and uh, eyes sticking out there. Um, and, can't really see Max Verstappen here. Probably he's ashamed. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah. So let's so remove this one and put them back in view. Obviously, tons of details on 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 the Spark car. Look, guys, don't get me wrong. Wow, well, check. Look at the size of the front wing. I think on the Red Bull is it's actually wow. So that's quite huge. Obviously, comparing apples with oranges because different regulations. If you don't collect mini chumps and spark, as I said, like what exactly are you? What exactly are you doing? Because these, these are the um, these are the best brands there are on um, on the market. But collectively, they've dropped the ball in the modern era of uh, Formula One. And 
yeah um i'm i like sport cars i mean i want to like them but um i still prefer the uh, the mini champs version sometimes they are more uh, more accurate but lately even then they, they drop the ball so that's that's subjective this is like one of those things where you can be a fanboy and you can like uh, one of them or you can just appreciate um, um, having uh, multiple models so I'm trying to arrange these ones <laughs> somehow but it just doesn't doesn't feel right I wish these two brand uh, these two brands mini champs and spark actually pushed each other to give something uh, back to us um, uh, consumers and um, actually raise up their uh, their game um, hopefully with this new generation of cars you know um, manufacturing will uh, will uh, will improve and I hope we, we saw the last of these winglands um, arguably this car looks amazing so you know fair point to those engineers who developed that but I guess it became a nightmare for um, for manufacturers to, to to build these things so for diecast manufacturers thanks for watching this video subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment in the comment section and I'll see you on the next one Mm-hmm.